Hey gang, Lou here from Jersey Shore Fabricators. So, I've said it before, and it bit me in the ass, I'm going to say it again. It's not a Mustang. 65 Impala SS. Yeah, VIN, it's a real SS. However, it's a bit of a mess. So we're going to call this a 65 Impala Mess S. Right? Get that? Mess S. Alright, so what's going on? Well, the car was dropped off by another shop. Uh, I do uh, quite a bit of work for this other shop, mostly welding up aluminum rims that are cracked, things like that. Uh, I do a lot of their welding stuff for them. This particular car uh, belongs to the owner's brother. And like, he's a busy production shop. You know, he's doing check engine lights, he's, you know, doing suspension work. You know, they're not really uh, a sheet metal place, uh, you know, a welding place, anything like that. So there's big plans for the car. However, all the sheet metal on this thing has to be addressed. <clears throat> now, I'm going to just give you a quick overview. All right, and then after that, we're going to dive into this. So basically what's going on, the car was pretty rotten. Somebody did a lot of work on the car. So the chassis is done, the floorboards are done, and it looks pretty good. Uh, they went out and bought new good mark metal for it, and they hung it on the car. It, they literally hung it on the car, strapped it down, and drove it over here. So one of the jobs that we're taxed with is gapping the car. Setting all the gaps on everything, getting the fenders and the doors to line up and, and all that. Now, beyond that, we've got some other issues to take care of. Let me, talk, let me show you what I'm talking about. Up at the front here, <clears throat> with the hood closed, you can see that it won't close. So that has to be addressed. The other thing, this is a brand new Goodmark hood. Showed up damage in shipping. They didn't open it for a week after they got it. Goodmark says they ain't taking it back. So, we're going to have to address that. There's still a fair amount of rust and rot in different places on the car. This is the upper front windshield area. The ring gutter on this side looks pretty good. But it looks like they started stripping the car and then left it outside to rot. Um, I'm not going to let it go back the way it is. Uh, we're going to have to sand this down and at least get epoxy primer on it. Uh, the quarter panel is cracked, so we're going to have to weld that up. The driver's side door uh, isn't here. Well, isn't on the car. It's here. But the problem is, if you're familiar with these older GM cars, there's these adjusting plates that go inside the uh, footwell here. And then the door hinge screws to that okay and this is where you get all your adjustment from well, whoever made this plate apparently failed engineering school because none of the holes line up so we're gonna have to make a new plate and tap it so that that all can all go back together uh, around the back of the car here, there is a rot hole down at the bottom of the quarter panel. That has to be addressed. Somebody did a patch here. So we'll strip that down and see what that looks like. Uh, they put a new deck lid on it. But again, nothing uh, whatsoever is close to being lined up. They hung a new quarter panel on it, but it's not welded in. So you can see here under... The roof sail panel, uh, nothing's welded, so I have to do the final fit, clamp it, and then weld that into place for them. And then, of course, weld it to the inner, uh, the inner fender wells down there. Uh, same thing with the roof here. It's all rusted. Uh, the drip rail on this side is more or less past it. So we're going to have to cut that off and make a new one. Now that has to come out right because uh, there's a piece of molding that comes, goes over that. So if it's anything other than right, it won't work. Uh, in the wooden shield area here, it looks pretty clean, just nasty. So uh, being that I have to come in here to do welding, we'll probably clean that up. Uh, the cowl's not bolted down. 
but this needs a new cowl anyway, so I'm going to see if they're getting a new one of those. They got a new fender on this side, uh, but again, it's just literally hung in place and held on with a couple of C-clamps. Other than that, though, she's a beaut. Yeah. So, uh, so let's say you buy a project like this. Let's say that you're a shop and you get a project like this. Let's say that you're new to this whole thing and, you know, the first question you're going to ask yourself is, holy crap, what did I get myself into and where do I start? So, let me see if I can address some of that. All right, so listen. This job, this project, isn't all that different than somebody's going to have at home. It could be better, it could be worse. I don't know. Uh, but every journey starts with the first step, right? So, let's think about this logically. Do we want to start putting primer and sanding down rust before we fix rust holes and assemble the car? No, it doesn't make any sense. You're going backwards at that point. So, my first job on this is to adjust the rust hole, yeah, address the rust hole on the quarter panel. Take a look at that quarter panel patch that they did on the other side. Job two is to make the plate so that we can hang the door on the car. At least now we can start gapping out that side of the car. All right? You want me so far? Uh, weld up the crackers in the quarter panel. My next step after that is going to be to fix the hood. Okay, because we can't adjust the hood if we don't have a clean line to work with. So I'll get that adjusted. After that, I'll work my way around this side of the car. We're going to get this quarter panel welded on, adjust the door, adjust the fender, do the drip rail. Then, all the other little rust, uh, the, uh, the rust that's on the roof, things like that, the quarter pound, then we could sand that down, treat it and at least get some epoxy primer on. So when it goes back to the shop, uh, whoever's gonna do the final body work on it, uh, you know, it, it's gonna be a little easier for them. And plus when the owner gets it back, at least it'll kind of be one color, you, you know, um, make it look like something, like, like pay, you know, spent money for something, because folks, he's gonna spend a couple bucks on this one. Um, all right, oh, and we have the bumpers for it. So we'll finish assembling the bumpers and make sure that they fit to the car the way that they're supposed to before any body work gets started so that, again, uh, a body shop that's charging, let's say, $125 or $150 an hour for labor isn't going to spend a whole lot of time fiddling with that. They could just get straight to doing, you know, filler and blocking and, you know, all the stuff that I'm not great at. Do I do it? Yes. Do I want to do it? Mm, not particularly. Um... And then we'll see what else they throw our way. You know, who knows? I mean, there may be other stuff uh, that they want done on the car. Uh, Long-term plans for the car. Uh, LS3, air ride suspension, custom interior. Uh, you know, a nice driver resto mod. So, uh, all right, let's 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 dive in. All right, so straight away, when we're looking at, can you see that? We're looking at this quarter panel. There's actually an inner piece in here, the inner uh, rocker. That's rotted out as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with cutting out this part. And then we're going to have to fix the inside part. And then come back and make this piece and put it all back together. So my uh, implement of destruction for this is just a small air power curl. Everybody get your safety glasses on.
So, what we're left with is more or less our template of what we're going to need to put this back together. Now, on the inside here, I think you guys can see that. Yeah. Alright, so here's our sill extension, quarter pound sport, whatever you want to call it. So that part of it had a hole in it. So again, like I said, I'll use this as a template. I'll form a piece to replace this, weld that in, dress it, prime it, and then make the outer piece. So I'm going to go get some sheet metal and start working on that. Okay, so what was a second for you was, a, I don't know, an hour or two for me. Um, let me catch you up on what's going on here. So, the part for the inner rocker here, uh, that little extension piece, that's made and welded in. It's welded from the back side. This is the piece that actually welds over here for the quarter panel. Uh, I had tacked it on just to make sure everything was good. Cut the welds, peeled it back primed and painted everything in here so it doesn't rust so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this up and then do the welding that's needed there and well that wraps up that part of the quarter and I still have the hole inside the wheel well here so I'll knock that out and while I was waiting for the paint to dry and just getting bored I went ahead and started stripping some of the rust off the quarter so so we go from here I said somebody left this outside and then down to here didn't clean up too bad uh, I cleaned it it went started at 40 grit went to 80 120 and 180 and then 220 uh, just to see what it would look like and you know that's good enough to put epoxy primer over and then the other thing I did while I was at it we had that crack up here so that's gone, welded, ground down, all the body lines match. Now, there's a lot of pitting going on up here. I don't know how much body work they plan on doing. My guess is a buttload. Uh, but that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and get that welded up and bring it back once it's done and show you what it looks like with the welds ground down and all that. Uh, but the procedure is just like any other sheet metal welding process. It's just going to be a series of tack welds, okay, until they're all closed in, and uh, that's that. Grind it down and move on with life. So continuing on with the Impala, <clears throat> this whole part here was rotted. It's actually two pieces. There's a, a, an inner piece and then an outer piece, which is this. Uh, both of them were rotted, so I went ahead and replaced this piece already. Did weld through primer, dressed the welds in here. This is the outside piece here. All right, that's copper welded. That's gonna go in just like that. So it's gonna get butt welded up at the top here and then plug welded down at the bottom. I uh, already punched my holes in here. Now, I use a plasma cutter because I work with four by eight sheets of metal. This is the shop dog. Barely. Um, <clears throat> so I cut it with the plasma cutter, I take it over to my throatless shear, trim it up. And then I've got a, an Eastwood um, hole puncher and flanging tool. And if I could just go down and take care of the holes without having to drill. Uh, the metal was a little deformed, so I run ahead and flattened it out. For the most part <clears throat> we're just gonna have to do a little blending so let me get this tack into place and I'll go turn the gas on
So I need to hold it in place. I got some vice grips, close this up. Do the finish weld up here, a little blending. And it'll be just like the factory. There's a little curve here at the bottom from the factory, so I put that in. And I'll bring it back when it's done. All right, so there it is, all ground down, cleaned up. Now what'll happen, this will get a spot of self-etching primer on it. And then where the weld seam is, and down here where this other seam is, uh, we'll give it a tick of uh, seam sealer, just to make sure if there's any pinholes are sealed up. And same thing on the back side here where I welded the inner piece. So, I'm actually gonna cut this off here. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot to do. So my next fun process is to start stripping paint off this thing uh, and seeing what else is wrong. Now, when I got the car, you know, the uh, shop side done, you know, the other side's done, the firewall's done, the frame is done, as far as paint, but this is really fun. So, looking at the firewall here, I just take my hand, see if I can, if I just take my hand, that paint's just flaking off. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and redo everything. At least get it in primer, and then whatever paint they put on, it's going to be up to them. Who knows, maybe they'll let me paint it. I don't know. The important takeaway here is that this repair sometimes is easy and sometimes it sucks. This car's got a little bit of both on it. So I'll bring it back when I have something, well, substantial to talk about. Uh, Riley, Riley and I here are going we're gonna to get back to work. Uh, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, please. Uh, it really helps to support the channel. Um, Got a comment? Leave a comment. All right. Until we see you next time. Peace.